and welcome back intrepid travelers to tyranny <laughs> that was a terrible one <laughs> we're back in the scarlet chorus camp and i was just doing some um inventory sorting selling stuff and bought a few more potions that kind of thing but i noticed werewolves ah, amazing let's go talk to them <laughs> Knight Yao, a young beastman, stands in the shadow of an enormous beast woman whose stature still manages to loom over you, even in her crouched position. The beastman's mouth froths with spittle that, that launches in every direction as he snarls at her. Knight Yao was promised worthy tough prey for joining, but beast woman only allows Knight Yao to hunt weakest of humans. Saves best kills for self. He pounds the earth, causing a self-fissure to erupt. Nightya was second strongest to Stonestalker. Males before joining Scarlet Humans. Ratted even with hundred blood with Tribes Primer. Was promised own pack for abandoning Tribes Mate. Claws at throat. There she is. <laughs> that is a terrible design. That is stupid. <sighs> Strong Stonestalker? Beast woman worth rutting? She snorts. No claws at throat. Sees only meowing. First season cub before beast woman now. Sees only tender foot. Only weak well fit to chase injured dying prey. Not best fighters on battlefield. Not yow bears his teeth and lunges for a beast woman. But she is swift to stand. Hackles raised and a callous palm far larger than his head harshly pins him to the ground in one deft swipe. His face smashes into the earth with a whip-like crack of stone, followed by a defeated whimper. Claws at throat stares down at you with as much regard as she might show the wild dogs that roam the camp. Human. Her nostrils perk as she rapidly scours her memory for your familiar scent. Then a sharp tooth grin slowly spreads across her face. Human reeks of blood. Mud death of triumph of gnashing, wailing teeth the beast woman can smell. Human is better fighter than runt called night. Yow. She grinds the beastman's face deep into the dirt before lifting her clawed and gnarled fingers off him. He quickly scrambles to his feet to nurse his head. Speak quickly and maybe beast woman will listen. So we got two I wager I could take you. Sure. You've gained loyalty with burst, you've gained failure with scarlet quest. The beast woman snorts a stab of incredibly opening her, the features of her face. Then she yowls, howls with racking, full-blooded laughter. Human is bold as Kiff is born hunter like a beast woman. If claws at throat did not have run to whelp cur like night yow to train, beast woman would happily enjoy fighting with human. Ah, oh, so night yow needs to die and then we get her. <laughs> Let's... We've already said I wager I could take you. And we don't have the hunter and we don't have the other requirements. So how did you come to join the Scarlet Chorus? Human pack called Scarlet Chorus is vicious, cunning, feral. Like tribes, like beast woman. She snarls, but the sound is pleased and rumbling. Nearly a purr as she cranes her face in the direction of the voices of Narat's war tent. Choruses humans are dirty and reek like rotten meat. So easily shriek and tear at own throats. But also respect strongest of pack. And beast women are strongest of all creatures. Are beast predators like Archon called Narat. Pax fierce and ruthless alpha. Is mystic who can swallow prey. Blood and bones whole. Makes beast women want to rut, fight, kill. What tribe are you from? She puffs her dirty hairy teats and purrs with pride. Claws at throat was born of tribe with no name and no lands. Called Summer Snout by Tearsman. Who stole Azura lands from tribe's ancestors. Then Closet Throat become great stone stalker, slaughtered own slaves and fought for tribe's freedom. Tribe who become strong, unbreakable as stone, because of earth mystic called Arkan Khan. She sniffs at the memory, but now Khan sleeps and dreams, drifting slowly into death in stone lands. Hundred blood protectors free tribe, and Closet Throat fights to kill more tearsmen as Scarlet Stalker. Eh, hey, farewell. Oh, I want her. I like this, she's got tits. Like, she's a werewolf thing. Werewolves don't have tits. They have many teats, but not tits. Alright, let's keep going on to, to the disfavored camp. That's what we're going to turn in two quests. We've got our triple net wilderness one and the other one that we finished. A 
I've had a brief look at what characters you can get during your playthrough as well now. Like, quite a few people have made it through the game, that kind of thing. And I know that, like, werewolf person is one, but I, I I'm not sure how you actually attain them yet. I haven't really researched that much. And I kind of don't want to. That kind of stuff is like, you know, it feels more like organic to do it in the process of playing rather than just designing it that way. Oh, there's Narat. No, Sevius. With all due respect, our cohorts have proven themselves against these apex fools time and time again. What can your earth shakers do other than get in the way? Hell spa. I don't want to be here, Sevius. And my orders don't involve proving our value to you. If the great general doesn't want magic on his side, then he can order us to stand down and sit this one out. Iron Marshal Enterist. I don't question what your majors bring to the table, Hell spa. But I have my reservations about your leaders. Why couldn't Radix show up to siege himself if he has more pressing issues than the state of the conquest? I should like to hear about it from his mouth. <laughs> yeah, inclined to think then take his place. Ooh, building a reputation. The party received emerald pin. The party is getting, ah, uh, yeah, nice. I hate to upset the chain of command during the time of war. Perhaps Radix's brother can convince him to remember his duty. Fate Binder, I thank you for your part you played, and you didn't have to Who risk yourself, you but you did all the same. Dog new tricks. Nice, this this favored favor ability stand together, stand tall. Ooh, we got an ability. Enchantry leveled up. Huh, resolve. Well, maybe he is. Let's go through the options. Uh, it should have been over real quick and simple. The first cohort arrived in the valley and went right for the kill. But that was before we knew the Vendrian guard and sages had that water witch on their side. A bigger problem is the Scarlet Chorus. They eagerly conscript the Vendrian guard, but have I have no proof of this. But it seems they do very little to keep the watchful eye on those drafted tearsmen. They are often sent out on patrol, and we suspect they use that opportunity to escape back to the Vendrian guard. Every coarse conscript has a choice. Life under Kyros or death under the army's boots. By all means, feel free to cut down those who choose the latter. We won't be offended. Just so we don't mistake each other, I know what I'm saying. Carries an implication of treachery. I'm not making a formal accusation before Tunon's agent. I'm just voicing my gut opinion. Uh, come on, Bina. Seems like asking why beasts that stink the disfavored are only too eager to deliver Kiros's peace to the tears while the Scarlet Chorus bring only mayhem in their wake. You can tell me the voice of Narat has a plan, and I'll take your word for it. But the Chorus sure seems to blunder around, never moving with purpose as we do. I wonder if we've been fighting the same war, soldier. I've seen Ashy Yankee's precious soldier away from more battles than he's won. If you want to call that progress, be my guest. Unless we find a way to work as one, I fear that the Scarlet Chorus will step in front of Craven Ash's strategies at every turn. As far as I'm concerned, it seems like the Voices of Narat is here to amuse himself, while the rest of us are here to do our job. Tell me about yourself. Not much to tell. My father has Sivius as the Elder. His father was Sivius the first of his name, lead drill master of Ash's first Iron Guard, back when they were the Bronze Guard. I was born into the Legion and with my hope. I'll die in the Legion. The rest you will hopefully hear about when the storytellers immortalize me. Bronze Guard? Well, this, his day and age was a century ago and they didn't have Kyros' modern luxuries like iron. So back then, the great general's inner council was known as the Bronze Guard. Right. Oh, there he is. No, that, yeah, that's him. Found you. Don't just cut on the impact. Push back with your shield. Take the momentum. Iron Marshal Eranos, field commander of the disfavored, pounds her fist in the air as she calls to the warriors of the training field. I said eyes on your opponent. Wasteline. If you spend more than a glance checking his footwork, you've lost. The disfavored officer turns to you, adjusting her pale golden circuit as she clears her throat. You need to stay on top of the troops or their skills will rust. It's for their own good even if they don't believe it. It was mentioned you're short on warriors and need help. What's the situation? 
I have brigades amassing along Placid and Echo Call, and the Little Tooth Crossings. The Venturing Guard may be able to hold one bridge, but they cannot hold against a concerted three-prong attack. I have no right to give you orders, but... Her words falter a short cough, breaking a foot. But we will die to cure us this inuk should we fail. So I'm about to let my pride blind me to the value of good help. Uh, I will assist, sure. Then our plan just might work. The Iron Marshal lifts her gauntlet close to her face, shifting her eyes from you to the metal articulations. We are loath to work with those who do not share our training and our values, but we know that Tunan, the adjudicator, selects only the most capable minds for his court, and I trust you will honor us all on the field. <laughs> and you will lead the charge of Echo Core Crossing. Assisting you will be Barrack of the Stone Shields. She points to a heavily armored soldier standing sentry at the edge of the training field. Before you ask, no, the forge bound were sloshed and dappled when they fitted his armor. He survived the full force of the Edict of Storms and his armor doesn't exactly come off. <laughs> Tactically, it's quite brilliant, but otherwise, it's something of a curse. Tapping her helmet twice, Erinor signals to the hulking presence. Barrack! Come meet the fate fighter. The soldier that steps up the battle better resembles an amalgamation of rusted blades and mismatched pieces of armor fused into a vaguely human shape. He reeks of sweat, feces, and whatever oil treatment keeps him flexible. Fate binder, the Iron Marshal has tasked me with keeping you alive, and I have no intention of disappointing her. That should be enough assurance for anyone. Staying out of trouble? I wasn't sure you would recognize me, Binder. A familiar voice emerges from the unfamiliar wall of walking iron. For a moment, you can recall the features of Barak of the Stone Shields when he wore the traditional disfavored uniform during the Stalwart campaign, though he looks much changed. And no, not staying out of trouble, just solving it. I take it you're with us for Echo Call? Barrett wraps his gauntlet against the twisted bands of iron that form his breastplate. Barrick, is that you under there? I had no idea you were in Vendrian's well. Fatebinder, do you know this walking anchor? I encountered Barrick in the Stalwart campaign, though he appears much changed. He's an excellent soldier. <laughs> I like that one. He may be as heavy as an anchor, but at least he's not as dense as one. That's funny. <laughs> Leave intellect to the sages in their fallen library. You would do better to know me as one iron link of the disfavored phalanx. The fate banner would be joining us for the push across the river. I figured an extra hand might help. And more importantly, if my worries come true and the chorus tries to impede the mission, we'll have an observer from the court on our side. I really wish like the main characters were all voiced for this stuff. It would have been like, I don't know, it just would have felt much better. Better to work with the Honorable Binder than some chorus children. He nods to you, his armor creaking as he bends his neck. I ask that Barrack accompany you there to arbitrate the cooperation between his company and the Scarlet Chorus. Barrack, you've been worthy with you've been without a cohort since the last battle of Stort. It's time we gave you a task more worthy than hauling wagons and leading training drills. She plants her hands on her hip and speaks in clipped official tones. Ash has assigned you to the Fate Binder service. You're to assume this task is ongoing until we find a more permanent spot for you, which could very well mean the swiftly approaching end of this war, or when the Fate Binder dismisses you. Is that understood? Barrack regards the Iron Marshal in oppressive silence. That's an order, Barrack. She shakes her head and sighs, returning her focus to you. He can be as stubborn as pulling a spire out of the earth, but he's a good soldier. I hope you don't mind the company. If only so I can put a large object between myself and the enemy. Sure. <laughs> you have gained wrath with this favorite and have gained the fear with Barak. Nice. She regards you with a perplexed flan. Barak is indeed here for your protection. If you don't find him suitable for the duty, you are free to discharge him from your service. Verse, loyalty, ability, death from above. Ooh, that sounds neato. 
Launch bursts into the air, allowing her to unleash a series of well-timed arrows into the target from above. Each of these arrows strikes true and has armor penetration. Barrack and the Fate Binder. Oh, it's another dual skill. Barrack and the Fate Binder. Both bang on their shields and armor, harassing an enemy. The target is compelled to attack Barrack for a short time, while the Fate Binder's mocking gestures leave the enemy confused and off guard. The foe loses all ability to parry and dodge until they recover their senses. Cool. Death from above! <laughs> That's a funny skill. Nice, you don't have any skills yet. Let's give him some skills. So, we've got two points. Let's see. Resolve determines a character's ability to endure physical and mental challenges. Resolve is the primary attribute used to derive the endurance from and magical defenses. Vitality determines a character's physical health and their strength of personality. Also increases the will defense. Yeah, we'll go endurance defense. I guess, yeah. Two of those. Oh, you can also put those points into um, these skills too. Right, Sentinel. There we go. Yep. Right, we've got a tank now. And Chantry's got a point. Yeah, that one. I don't know what it does, but that one. <laughs> I think we might get this a shorter episode and leave it there. And then just get the combat done next time. Thanks, everyone, and I'll see you next time in Tyranny! <laughs> see you next time.